Consider this puzzle. Can you find the patch that completes the image? Solving the puzzle requires you to imagine the missing piece of the picture and then to match the image in your mind to the options on the right side of the screen. In other words, this puzzle requires you to imagine, mentally synthesize something that you have never seen before. The mental synthesis theory is primarily concerned with what happens in our brain, neurologically, when two objects never before seen together are imagined together for the first time. Let's start with a simple combination of two objects. Say, an apple on top of a dolphin. The scientific consensus is that a familiar object, such as an apple, is represented in the brain by thousands of neurons dispersed throughout the posterior cortex. When one sees or recalls an apple, the neurons within the apple's neuronal ensemble tend to activate into synchronous resonant activity. This synchronous electrical spike of thousands of neurons encoding an apple allows you to perceive an apple. A dolphin is encoded in your brain by a different neuronal ensemble. When neurons of that neuronal ensemble synchronously fire an electric spike, you perceive a dolphin. What happens when an apple and a dolphin are imagined together for the first time? The mental synthesis theory posits that the neuronal ensembles of an apple and a dolphin are synchronized in time. Only when the apple neuronal ensemble is firing an electrical spike at the same time as the dolphin neuronal ensemble do we perceive the two disparate objects together as one morphed image. Which part of the brain is responsible for orchestrating this synchronization? Functional MRI, as well as brain lesion studies, implicate the prefrontal cortex, the area just behind your forehead. The prefrontal cortex can be viewed as a puppeteer controlling its puppets, memories encoded in neuronal ensembles stored in the posterior cortex. The prefrontal cortex puppeteer pulls the strings and thus changes the firing phase of the neuronal ensembles. Phase-synchronized neuronal ensembles are then consciously experienced as a whole novel object. The mental synthesis theory predicts that to achieve synchronization of neuronal ensembles dispersed throughout the posterior cortex, the prefrontal cortex must rely on synchronous connections to the posterior cortex. Notice, however, that the physical length of connections between the prefrontal cortex and the neurons in the posterior cortex varies significantly. Some connections are short, while other connections are much longer. If conduction velocity in those connections was uniform, the electrical spikes would arrive at the target neurons in the posterior cortex at different times. The neuronal ensembles of an apple and a dolphin activate asynchronously, and the apple and the dolphin will be perceived as two separate objects, not as an apple on top of a dolphin. Thus, the conduction velocity in the distant fibers must significantly increase to compensate for physically longer connections. The increase in conduction velocity is accomplished by wrapping longer fibers with multiple layers of fatty substance called myelin. Every additional layer of myelin increases conduction velocity in that fiber. Thus, some fibers are wrapped with up to 100 layers of myelin, while others are wrapped with just a few layers. The current scientific consensus is that myelination is the primary factor producing uniform conduction time in neural networks. Longer fibers are wrapped with many extra layers of myelin to increase the conduction velocity. But how does the brain know how much myelin each fiber needs to achieve uniform conduction time? Considering the many variables affecting conduction delays in the brain, genetic instructions alone would seem inadequate to specify the optimal conduction velocity in every fiber. Research on early brain development shows that the development of mental synthesis primarily depends on the timely acquisition of syntactic speech during childhood. Children talk with themselves and with others and in the process create an infinite number of novel mental images in their brain. The active use of syntactic language during childhood likely naturally leads to the development of synchronous neural connections between the prefrontal cortex and the posterior cortex. However, this stimulation by syntactic language is only effective in early childhood during the so-called critical period when the brain is at the peak of plasticity. This type of plasticity seems to fall quickly thereafter and fades away after puberty. Thus, the natural stimulation by syntactic language comes too late or does not come to children with language delay. These children are not able to benefit from the training provided naturally by syntactic language at the time when their brains are most receptive to the development of mental synthesis. As a result, many children with language delay end up with a significant impairment in the ability to intentionally imagine novel scenarios and to mentally solve even the simplest of problems. For these children, it is usually very difficult to understand complex syntactic speech, imagine the consequences of their actions, and to mentally simulate thoughts of other people. While it often seems that the problem of children with language delay is lack of speech, 
The deeper and the more important problem is mental synthesis disability. These children will likely gain more proficiency in speech as they grow up, but it is nearly impossible to improve mental synthesis after the end of the critical period. One of the main challenges of working with these children is finding a way to provide them with the necessary brain training outside the low-performing speech domain. A methodology based exclusively on visual puzzles may be well suited for such a task. In the absence of syntactic speech, imagination software provides exercises designed to facilitate development of mental synthesis. Our hypothesis is that training the visual syntax with visual puzzles can assist the development of synchronous neural connections between the prefrontal cortex and the posterior cortex, and thus establish neurological framework necessary for the future acquisition of a full syntactic language. The software aims to provide a non-verbal approach to train the brain to imagine never-before-seen images and scenarios. The program is designed as an intelligent tutoring system, dynamically responding and adjusting to the needs of each individual child. Since the software is aimed at kids with a language disorder, it is designed to require minimal instruction and explanation, working more as a facilitator. Kids work independently to figure out the solution without verbal instruction. The software's main job is to adaptively adjust the difficulty of problems to be just one small step away from the child's level. Not too easy and not too difficult. The imagination approach creates a non-verbal way for kids to acquire mental synthesis independently. Our belief is that as long as the staircase is adjusted correctly, any child can climb up. We hope that the timely application of the imagination visual puzzles will help millions of children grow into creative adults who can live independently and benefit broader society.